Yeah, so we're um, we're rolling through the the paramis now. A review of the paramis one at a time, one week at a time. Yeah, as we move uh, through to the end of the year. And uh, next up Maybe. is um, sila, morality, virtue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll be spending a fair amount of time on this next year as well. On this whole topic, there's so much there, and and so much of it was um, again, it's one of those bits that was. Mm. It's kind of surprising now to think of it, but it was really overlooked a lot um, when uh, in the in the 70s and 80s and even in the 90s. It was all about just be mindful and everything else will take care of itself. You know, uh, it's funny how, how long it took for me to see that a mindfulness itself uh, doesn't take care of right speech or right action. Um, mindfulness is part of it. But it's a different kind of intention. It's a different kind of um, commitment to to harmony and to non harm, uh, and to uh, restraint in certain areas. Restraint in the in the good sense, you know, restraining from doing something that isn't so wholesome, in favor of something that is a bit more wholesome. Um, yeah, when Joseph talks about um, sila as just a just all around goodness, which I kind of like. Just all around goodness in speech and action, and in and and in our intention, beginning to, to bring that more to to our intention, right? Yeah. Uh, internally and uh, uh, internally and externally, yeah. Internally and externally, uh, um, and even if we don't do a lot of damage externally, <clears throat> although. There are moments for all of us, aren't there? When we're just a little careless <clears throat> in speech or action. For me, one of the, 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 the helpful things continues to be helpful. Really make the, the thing something that wasn't so skillful and the effect that it would have on my meditation. They're really clear about that in, in, uh, in the text that, you know, pay closer attention to that. And you'll see that the two are not so separate. You know, they're, they're not so disconnected, you know. And through uh, some unskillfulness here or there, that's part of what can show up in our meditation. It does for me, even more so, actually. I don't, it's, it's as if uh, the more sensitive we become, the less we get away with without seeing the implication internally. If I say something unskillful, and I go, ah, that wasn't so skillful. I might be aware of it in the moment when I'm sitting. It's like, ah, it comes up again. Why did I say that? Why did I say it in that way? Why didn't I just, you know, ah, ah. And now I'm stewing in that a little bit, you know, a little bit of regret, a little bit of remorse, a little bit of um, self-blame. A little bit of self-blame in there, in the internal space that I've invited because, because of the, the previous uh, speech, speech or action, you know? Now, it's obviously not the only reason that we, we want to engage in, in, in sila practice is so that we'll have better meditation. But it will help with meditation, in, in my experience, you know. And there's this orientation, there's this general orientation toward what they call, it's a wonderful word, right? Toward blamelessness. Toward, in the direction, forget about blamelessness, but in the direction of having less, less feelings to feel, to feel self-blame about. Do you know? It's like clearing up the interior a little bit, the interior landscape a little bit, you know, by simply behaving in a more, slightly more harmonious, slightly more gentle, slightly more kind uh, way and holding that more in mind, you know, as we move through our lives. There's nothing really esoteric about it. And it's really about all, always, always in, in, in Buddhism, which I appreciate the um, the deepening appreciation 
of all the all of all the uh, uh, the precepts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, um, the the verified faith in that comes from direct experience, our own direct experience with it, as opposed to this is I know I should I know I should do it. That, that's not it. That's not quite it. That's not where it really takes on a deeper sense of relevance. It's because I see it in myself. Oh, yeah, well, well, I just said that careless thing. Yeah, but it had an impact. It had an impact out there and it has an impact in here. That's why. Oh, right. That's why. Yeah, yeah. Because it doesn't feel right inside. You know, it doesn't land well inside. You know, even if I can make a case for it. Well, he says, that person said something mean to me. So that's why I said, well, that, yeah, that's okay. But that doesn't work. That doesn't work either. You know, that, that, that doesn't work, you know. <clears throat> and when we can restrain a little bit more, we don't like that word restraint. But again, I, I think it meant, we mentioned it last week and, and it was a question about renunciation. Renunciation is about not doing something that doesn't feel good. And replacing it with sometimes it's just silence, but sometimes replacing something with, with something a little bit more wholesome. It's just moving in that direction. And um, mm, I love that Susan said last week too about how all of the paramis are interconnected. There's so many bits, you know. There's these they seem like isolated bits on their own, but they're all connected. And I hadn't thought about the paramis all being interconnected, but of course they are. And if you think of Sila and you go through some of the other paramis, you go, oh yeah, you might do this with all the paramis. Just notice how they're, they all kind of connect. Obviously, Sila is connected with generosity, moving towards you. Obviously, it's connected with patience. You know, you know, we sometimes need to have patience even before acting, even before speaking, You know, just that pause, right? Obviously, it's connected with 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 intention. It's connected with um, renunciation, as we've mentioned. It's connected with metta, with loving kindness. It's connected with equanimity, which is the the, the last parami. Sometimes we don't have to embrace everything. We just have okay. Let's just, let's just bring equanimity to the situation. You know, in my in Sila, it's very much connected with Sila. All of these paramis are have their place. They're all interconnected, and all of them are inviting us to move more in the direction of the affiliative part of our nature. Right, the part of us that knows that we're all interconnected. The part of us that knows something about. Uh, the, doing into others, uh, to others is to myself, to myself is to others, as Susan keeps reminding us, you know, it, it's it's obvious. It's obvious that we want to move more in that direction. You know, the affiliative part of our nature, which is not the only part of our nature. It's not, right? We are clear about that, aren't we? There is, there is greed in there. There is anger in there. There is defensiveness in there. There is what about me in there. All of that is in there. You know, all of that is in there. You know, we have all, we have all of, all of the, some of the more primal, rougher energies in us as well. We know that. We acknowledge that. We have to make room. We have to make, we have to make room for all, for all of that in our practice. But we're making less room for acting more of it out as we move as we move into the practice and as we as we really take seriously a bit more seriously, Sila, we'd we would rather move in a wholesome direction. No? We would rather not identify so much as much as we used to when some of those rougher energies are moving through us. And when we want to find someone to blame, I'm unhappy, but whose fault is it? You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's part of our nature. You know, it's like, ah, 
what do I do with this rough energy? You know, and it's challenging sometimes for all of us, right? But seal is an invitation to, you know, we don't talk about goals. You know that. Susan and I don't talk about goals because that gets us, it's a setup for us. It's a setup for we should be more pure. We should be more perfect. We should be more something. But it is moving in that direction when we can. Yeah, Sila. It's moving in that direction as best we can. Yeah, uh, and, uh, and in the direction of the, the affiliative part of our nature, really. Yeah. So I think of it that way. I think of it in terms of non-harm in general um, toward other, but a lot toward ourselves. It's the rough, that ragged energy toward ourselves. Sila shows up there. It's important there, very important there. Yeah. Non-harm and affiliative part of our nature. You know, I'm always looking for the simple, what is it really? Non-harm. Okay, I got it. I can get that. I can get that. In more and more situations, what? What? It seems like it's, there's so much to it. You know, non-harm. You know? What, is, what does non-harm look like in this moment, in this situation? You know? You know it's, it's my, it's, my simple mnemonic around, around sila. You know, what does non-harm mean in, in this moment? You know? You know? So... Let's let's keep in, incorporating that in, in, in to our degree in, in 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 ways that we can, yeah, and all the ways that we can do that. Keep moving in that direction together, yeah. So, thank you for your kind attention, and um, let's bring some kind <laughs> attention and some sila to our uh, meditation practice together this morning, and let's open up a little bit. And when you're ready, no. <clears throat> yeah, coming in. I like to say coming in for a landing. <clears throat> Lightly closing the eyes. and lightly attending to the breath, maybe bringing it more into the foreground by um, expanding it a, a bit on the inhale and releasing a bit more on the exhale. And so, uh, breath by breath, orienting toward comfort, a comfortable breath, and toward ease. So much of the here at the beginning of meditation is taking our hands off the doing wheel, you know, off the, the push, the leaning into the next. Yeah. The push, the push to focus, the push to get calm the mind. Yeah. And it's, oh, no, 
actually settling back a bit more, softening the breath. Permission to do that. Permission to do that, breath by breath.
And when the mind drifts away, the willingness to return, if possible, with care and with warmth, with kindness.
and softening and making room for whatever is arising in your practice. Allowing.
in the last few minutes of the meditation, maybe settling back a bit more in receptive attention mode.
Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for your practice. Let me stop the recording, give you permission to unmute.